Hi, and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and sleepy meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. If you've been listening for a while, you know that our library here at Sleep HQ is stuffed from floor to ceiling with different kinds of bedtime stories. We've read tales about Sunny the playful puppy, Disco the dancing dragon, Theodore the magnanimous seafaring monkey, and, of course, Coco, the ukulele playing koala bear, and our show's mascot. Can you remember any others? I'd love to know which story you come back to each night, or which one you tell your friends and family about. Who knows? Maybe it'll be this one. In tonight's bedtime story, we meet Maggie and her best friend, a white, fluffy rabbit called Marshmallow. Maggie is a magician, and her bunny friend is always there to help whenever Maggie puts on a magic show. Marshmallow is happy to be an assistant, But one day, he's given the chance to be a magician too. Settle down in your bed and get as comfy as you can. Wiggle your fingers, toes and nose, just like Marshmallow. And listen while I tell you all about Marshmallow's first performance as a magician. This is The Magician's Rabbit by Gillian Rogerson. On her eighth birthday, Maggie Green was given two amazing gifts from her parents. One was a magic set that she wanted since she was five, and the other was something she wasn't expecting at all, a cute, fluffy white bunny. As soon as Maggie saw the little rabbit, she fell in love with him and knew they would be best friends forever. She could tell by looking into the rabbit's golden brown eyes that he felt the same way too. When Maggie's mum asked what they should call him, Maggie said, Marshmallow, because that's what he looks like. A big, soft marshmallow. And I love marshmallows. The little bunny stayed right next to Maggie's side throughout her birthday. Maggie held him in her hands, but when she needed her hands for something else, such as unwrapping presents or passing slices of birthday cake around, she gave Marshmallow to her mum to look after. Her mum was happy to do so, because she had fallen in love with Marshmallow too. At the end of her birthday, Maggie and the rabbit went to her bedroom. Maggie sat down on a big floor cushion. She looked at the magic set and tried to make sense of it. Marshmallow sat on her lap and tried to make sense of it too. Maggie said to the rabbit, These instructions look confusing. I don't think I'll be able to do any of the tricks. Marshmallow looked at her with his lovely brown eyes and twitched his little nose as if to say, You can do it. I know you can. Maggie smiled. Thank you, Marshmallow. I will keep trying until I can do all these tricks. And that's just what Maggie did. She took her time, read the instructions carefully, and using the magic wand that came with the kit, She practiced every magic trick over and over again. Marshmallow was by her side all the time. He talked to her in his special rabbit language, which included twitching his nose, making his ears go floppy, and thumping his back legs. When Maggie got a trick right, Marshmallow would bunny hop joyfully around the room, Sometimes, Maggie would join in with him and bunny hop too. Maggie quickly got used to Marshmallow's rabbit language and they would spend hours talking to each other. Maggie practised and practised her magic skills 
until the day came when she was ready to put on a show for her mum and dad. Before the show began, Maggie took her little rabbit into her bedroom, sat down and placed him on her knee. She said, Marshmallow, you know how all my tricks work. I'm worried I might forget how to do some of them. Will you be my assistant, please? And then, if I forget something, you can remind me what to do. The fluffy white bunny blinked twice and scrunched up his tiny pink nose, which meant yes. Oh, thank you, Maggie said with a big smile on her face. I feel much braver now with you helping me. They had a little cuddle for good luck. They left Maggie's bedroom and headed to the living room, where their first magical performance was going to take place. Maggie and Marshmallow began the show by giving the audience, Maggie's mum and dad, a bow. Maggie's first trick was to make a large knot in a piece of rope disappear. She held the rope up, waved her wand over it, and said the magic word. Abracadabra! Marshmallow repeated the magic word by twitching his whiskers three times. Maggie waved the rope in the air. Ta-da! The knot has disappeared! Her parents were amazed and gave her a round of applause. More tricks followed, each one more astounding than the one before it. Maggie asked her dad to pick a playing card from a pack. She closed her eyes whilst he took a card out. Marshmallow did too. Using her magic wand, Maggie tapped the remaining cards and said, Dad, your card is the Queen of Hearts, am I right? Her dad said yes. He was totally amazed and asked how she'd done it. Maggie gave him a serious look and said, A magician never reveals her secrets. Her dad smiled at Marshmallow. How about the magician's rabbit? Will he tell me how you did it? Marshmallow tapped his right leg on the floor and blinked once. Maggie's dad didn't speak rabbit, but he assumed the bunny was saying he wouldn't reveal Maggie's secrets either. Her parents asked for more tricks. The young magician made black and white pictures inside a book magically transform into coloured ones. And then she made a card float in mid-air above her hand. Marshmallow held his paw out and Maggie made the card float in front of him too. She didn't even know she could do that, but it was a neat trick. Maggie moved over to her mum and pulled out a ten-pence piece from behind her mum's ear. Maggie then put it in her palm and made it disappear. Her mother shook her head in amazement. Just before Maggie started her next trick, Marshmallow made a snuffling noise, which meant he needed Maggie's attention. She went over to him and had a little chat with the bunny. She listened to what he said, nodded, and agreed it was a good idea. Maggie turned back to her audience and said, Marshmallow wants to help me with this next trick. She held up a hollow cardboard tube and showed it to the audience. Please look closely. There is nothing inside this tube. It is completely empty. The audience nodded. They could see 
It was a completely empty tube. Dad, please hold the end of the tube. Maggie handed the tube to her dad. Then she picked up Marshmallow and moved him over to the other end of the tube. The fluffy bunny twitched his whiskers three times as he said, Abracadabra. He moved his head into the opening of the tube and grabbed something inside. Still with Marshmallow in her arms, Maggie took a step back. Marshmallow was holding a string of silky handkerchiefs in his little mouth. Each handkerchief was attached to another in a long, long line. Maggie took more steps backwards as Marshmallow pulled more and more handkerchiefs from the tube. Maggie's dad said, How is he doing that? I thought the tube was empty. The young magician and her rabbit said nothing. They just smiled at each other. It was soon time for the last trick. It was going to be the most difficult one, and Maggie was a little bit worried that it wouldn't work. Marshmallow could see she was nervous and told Maggie it was going to be okay. She could do it. Maggie nodded at him. Yes, she could do it. She could do anything with her best friend at her side. Maggie looked at the audience. For my last trick, I'm going to make Marshmallow disappear. But don't worry, I'll make him reappear straight afterwards. Maggie carefully put Marshmallow inside a glittery gold box. She placed a silky silver cloth over the top of it waved her magic wand and said, Abracadabra. She pulled the silver cloth away and lifted the box to show the audience. It was empty. Marshmallow, the little fluffy bunny, had disappeared. Maggie knew exactly where he'd gone but she wasn't going to tell the audience that just yet. Her mum and dad looked left and right in search of the rabbit. Her dad even looked under the sofa in case the rabbit was hiding there. He scratched his head in confusion. Where has he gone? Maggie pointed to the armchair at the side of the fireplace. Marshmallow was sitting on the cushion, a little bunny smile on his fluffy face. He raised his paw and gave the audience a happy wave. Maggie's mum and dad laughed in delight and said it was the best magic trick they had ever seen. Maggie said thank you and bowed her head. Marshmallow would have bowed his head too, but he'd fallen asleep. Being a magician's assistant was tiring work. Later on that day, Maggie and Marshmallow had a chat and agreed their first performance had gone very well. Maggie told her best friend she would love to be a professional magician one day. Marshmallow put his paw on her arm, looked at her with his golden brown eyes and told her she could do that. He believed in her. Thank you, Marshmallow. That means a lot to me. The years passed by and Maggie practised her magic skills every day. As always... Her best friend, Marshmallow, was right by her side. 
Together, they learned more difficult tricks, and Marshmallow even learned how to do some on his own. When Maggie was old enough, her dream of becoming a professional magician came true. She set up a business and advertised her magic shows. Of course, Marshmallow was there at every performance, and he loved being her assistant. Maggie and Marshmallow's magic shows became very popular, and they were in great demand, especially for children's parties. The children loved seeing Maggie's amazing tricks, and they adored watching Marshmallow as he helped her. Maggie told Marshmallow he should perform some tricks on his own at the shows, but the rabbit was too shy to do that, and said Maggie was the magician, not him. Maggie didn't agree, but she kept hoping that one day Marshmallow would feel brave enough to perform on his own. And that day soon came, and it happened in quite an unexpected way. Maggie and Marshmallow had been booked to perform at a child's seventh birthday party. As always, they had arrived early at the party to make sure they had plenty of time to set up their equipment. But there was a problem. Oh no, Maggie said to Marshmallow. I've forgotten some of my props and my magic wand. She sighed. I suppose we could do the show without them. Marshmallow shook his head and told Maggie she should go home and collect them. It wouldn't take long in the car, and she would be back before the show was due to start. And while she was gone, he would continue setting everything up for the show. Maggie said that was an excellent idea. She kissed the top of his fluffy head. She loved her little pal so much. Maggie told the child's mum what was happening and that she wouldn't be long. Maggie jumped into her car and drove home. She soon arrived at her house and collected the items she needed. She then jumped back in the car but her car wouldn't start. It had broken down. She phoned a car mechanic, but he told her he couldn't get there for a while. She then phoned for a taxi to pick her up as soon as possible, but they were very busy and couldn't help. Maggie knew she was going to be late for the start of the party, yet she wasn't worried because she knew the magic show could begin without her, but she would need Marshmallow's help for that. Maggie phoned the mother of the birthday child and explained what had happened. Maggie said, I'll get there as soon as I can, but the show can start without me. Please could you take me over to Marshmallow and put me on a video call so he can see me? The mother was confused, but did what Maggie asked. She placed her phone in front of the rabbit. Marshmallow saw Maggie on the phone's screen and blinked in surprise. Maggie said to him, I'll be late arriving at the party, but you can start the show without me. You know lots of magic tricks, and you know how to do them on your own. Can you start the show on your own, please? Marshmallow shook his head. He told Maggie he couldn't do that. He wasn't a magician like her. Maggie smiled fondly at her friend. I've seen how good you are. You're a marvellous magician. The rabbit asked what would happen if he forgot how to do a trick. Maggie replied, You won't forget. You always remember what to do. 
Marshmallow, you can do this. I know you can. I believe in you. You just need to believe in yourself. Can you do that? She looked into his little brown eyes and waited for his answer. The fluffy white bunny blinked twice and scrunched up his tiny pink nose, which meant yes. Thank you. You're going to be amazing, Maggie said. I'll get there as soon as I can. Have fun. They said goodbye. Maggie smiled. She knew Marshmallow would do a wonderful job. She settled back in her seat and waited for the car mechanic to arrive. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, a fluffy white rabbit took a few moments to calm his mind. He took some deep, slow breaths. It was something Maggie and he did every time before a show. It helped them to relax. Marshmallow took a deep breath in and then breathed out. In and out. In and out. He thought about how much Maggie believed in him. Thinking about his lovely friend made the rabbit smile. He would start the show on his own. He wouldn't let Maggie down. And he wouldn't let the children down either. He took some more deep breaths and felt much calmer. He was ready. Marshmallow nodded at the mother of the birthday child to let her know the show was about to begin. The mother seemed to understand him because she gathered the party children together and sat them down in front of the fluffy white rabbit. The children smiled at the rabbit and waited for the show to begin. Marshmallow began the performance the same way he did with Maggie, with some card tricks. Through a series of nods and twitches of his nose and whiskers, Marshmallow managed to make himself understood by the party children. He asked a girl to pick a card, but said she mustn't show it to him. With a giggle, the child did so and held the card behind her back. Marshmallow twitched his whiskers three times to say abracadabra. Then he thumped his back leg three times and beckoned the mother to move over to him. When she came closer, Marshmallow reached his paw out and covered up the diamond ring she was wearing. He looked back at the child who had picked the card. Oh, the mother said in surprise. I think Marshmallow's trying to tell us the card is the three of diamonds. Is that the card you picked, Claire? Claire gasped and held up the card. It was the three of diamonds. The children were utterly amazed and asked Marshmallow how he had known that. Marshmallow didn't say anything, but smiled wisely at the audience. More tricks followed. Marshmallow started with the simpler ones because they were easier to do and he knew them very well. He still felt a bit nervous about performing on his own, but seeing the delight on the children's faces made his nervousness disappear. It wasn't long before he was having a lot of fun performing in front of the audience. 
The children watching him were having a lot of fun too. They'd never seen a rabbit doing magic tricks before and thought he was absolutely wonderful. Marshmallow asked the birthday child, a boy called Ben, to come closer and help him with the next magic trick. Ben moved over to the rabbit. Marshmallow put his paw on Ben's shoulder and reached for something behind Ben's ear. The rabbit's whiskers tickled Ben's cheeks and the boy giggled. The rabbit pulled out a ten pence piece from behind the boy's ear and showed it to him. Wow, Ben said. That was behind my ear? Have I got one behind my other ear? Marshmallow had a look, and to Ben's delight, there was another ten pence piece hiding there too. The rabbit gave it to Ben. Eager hands in the audience shot up, and the children all wanted to know if they had money behind their ears as well. Marshmallow hopped towards them and began checking the children's ears. He found silver coins behind them all. The children were astonished and stared at their coins as though they'd never seen money before. One girl said she was going to keep the coin forever and would never ever, ever spend it. More tricks followed. The children loved them all. They ooed when Marshmallow made shiny silver leaves magically appear on a tiny tree. They aahed when he made silver hoops twirl and whirl through the air without anyone holding them and they stared in astonishment when Marshmallow juggled three carrots in his little paws whilst dancing backwards across the room. And then, with a twitch of his nose, the rabbit made the carrots disappear. The children cheered and gave him a loud round of applause. They asked for more tricks. Marshmallow was having such a good time that he didn't notice Maggie had arrived at the party. She was standing in the doorway and watching her little friend at work. As soon as she'd seen what a good time Marshmallow was having, she had decided to stay where she was and let him continue on his own. Her heart filled with love as she watched him perform. He was a marvellous magician. The children thought so too, and couldn't take their eyes off him. It was soon time for Marshmallow's last trick. It was the one where Maggie would place him in a golden, glittery box, and make him disappear. It was going to be a tricky one to perform on his own, but Marshmallow was going to try his best. The little rabbit moved over to the box and climbed inside. Using his mouth, he pulled a silver cloth over the top of the box so that he was hidden from the audience. He tapped on the inside of the box with his paw to let the audience know he was still there. Before he made himself disappear, he took a deep breath and blew on the silver cloth. It lifted in the air and floated to the rug at the side of the box. The birthday boy, Ben, walked over to the box 
and looked inside. It's empty, he said. Marshmallow has disappeared. Before the children could wonder where he'd gone, Ben's mother said, He hasn't disappeared. He's sitting on the sofa. Look, children. The children looked at the sofa and saw Marshmallow sitting there. He waved his paw at them. He yawned. Being a magician was very tiring. He closed his eyes and fell asleep. When he woke up a little later, he was cuddled up on Maggie's lap. She smiled lovingly at him and said she'd seen some of his show. She told him how wonderful he was and that she was very proud of him. Marshmallow felt all warm and fuzzy inside. He was proud of himself too. He didn't think he'd be able to perform a show on his own, but he had managed to do it, and he'd had a lot of fun too. Maggie stroked Marshmallow's soft fur. She said, I've got a present for you. It's something I have had for a long time and I've been waiting for the right moment to give it to you. And this is the right moment. She reached into her pocket and pulled out a little magic wand. It was the perfect size for a rabbit to hold. Marshmallow was confused and said he didn't need a magic wand because it was Maggie who used one, not him. He was the assistant, not the magician. In a soft voice, Maggie said, You are a magician. The best magician I have ever seen. I'd like you to perform more magic tricks on your own in our shows. We could even come up with new tricks that need two magicians. What do you say? Would you like to be a professional magician with your own wand and perform with me? The fluffy white bunny blinked twice and scrunched up his tiny pink nose, which meant yes. Marshmallow yawned and fell back asleep, cosy and warm in Maggie's arms. He drifted into dreams of magical silver rings floating through the air. Never-ending lines of silk handkerchiefs coming out of empty tubes. Books that changed from black and white into colour. Making himself vanish from inside a golden glittering box and reappearing somewhere else. His best dream was of standing next to his lovely friend Maggie and performing magical tricks together. What a wonderful dream.